So we're joined this morning here in the UK in Plymouth by David Adkins, who is a lecturer in procurement and supply chain management in Plymouth Business School. Um, thanks, David, for joining us. We've got 10 questions that we're going to go through, Toby and I. Toby is our student recruitment, um, student experience officer, sorry, Toby, here in UPIC, University of Plymouth International College. Uh, I'm Tim, Tim Gutzel. I'm the Director of Marketing and Admissions for the College. So, David, could you just start by telling us a little bit about your background and how you ch came to choose Plymouth as a place to live and to work? Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you. Good morning. It's, uh, if, I, if I start with the fact that I hated school, I absolutely detested every kind of minute, especially of GCSE and, and A-level. It was, it was so, so as soon as I, 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 I could, I left and I got, I got a job and I, I worked for a good one, four or five years, before I sort of realised that actually five, six pounds an hour was not going to cut it. It's not, it's not what I wanted to do with my life. So I was living locally at the time and we were down in, in Cornwall. So I, I sort of thought, let's have a look at Plymouth, found, came across the Maritime Business Program and thought, actually, that sounds really interesting. It sounds the kind of thing that I'm, I'd like to do. Um, got the place and and came in and, and really enjoyed it you know it's to go from somebody who on day one found it really scary to write half a side of a4 as, as the first assignment to being uh, to kind of coming out with the first and, and having really enjoyed the whole academic experience it was, was pretty amazing uh, after that, I left. I had a couple of jobs. I uh, worked for uh, a company building super yachts for a while. Uh, joined what is part of the Navy. And went to sea and did that. And then worked uh, for the MOD, buying chips and buying parts and, and doing the kind of procurement and supply chain bit uh, for them. And, and then saw a job at Plymouth. Uh, and having been an undergraduate here, it seemed like quite a quite a good opportunity. So I like, sort of put in a bit of an application and uh, got an interview, got a job, and, and I've been here ever since. So and that's that's ten years ago. So uh, that's kind of how I I, I am here, uh, and it's a I've really enjoyed it. Every all of the last ten years, and uh, my time as a student has been fantastic. Great, thanks. What, what would you say of the three things that you most like about Plymouth as a city? Its location. Its location is amazing for everything from kind of the sea on one side to Dartmoor on the other. Uh, and there's plenty of opportunities to, to get out and, and do stuff. It's that little bit away from the kind of uh, sort of the big city life, which isn't me. Uh, but it's, it's kind of got everything that, that I need. So, so location-wise, it, it, it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty friendly place. Uh, I like that. It, having lived in, in various other parts of, of the country, it sort of struck me just how kind of friendly and, and welcoming people are here. And uh, so, so, that, so that's quite, a, quite an important one. Uh, if I'm gonna find the, 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 the third thing, I think it's a great place to, to bring up kids. I've got three small children. And, and actually, for the opportunities that it provides as a sort of growing up, uh, and then actually some of the opportunities that it provides with, with, with possible employment in the future, I, I think it's just a great, it's just a great place to, to be, really. Fantastic. Great, thanks. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what are the three things you like about the university? I think it's, again, I think it taps into that friendliness that I've just talked about. Uh, the university is a really kind of quite a nice, comfortable, sort of quite, quite supportive sort of place to be. People know who you are. Uh, and that's one of the great things we like about our programs. That, I mean, they're not so small that you kind of stand out, but they're not so big that you're not just a, another face in a lecture theatre. We do get to know you pretty well in, in the time that, that you're here. Uh, and I think some of that is shown by the, the longer term relationships that, that are formed. Uh, it, it was only recently that I picked up the phone to somebody that I studied with uh, back in the early, early 2000s. And we kind of carried on a conversation 
that as if we'd ne- we hadn't had about 15 years apart. It, 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 so, so I think that is, is, is something really good that the university brings. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the opportunity, Plymouth is well known for its maritime and shipping and marine stuff. And that is respected in industry. Uh, one of the greatest pleasures I have in, in my job is seeing people graduate. I, I, I always say graduation is the best day of the year and people, people go, really? But yeah, it is. Because you kind of see that transition from being a student into the next bit. And, and to see so many of our students getting jobs in the industry, uh, partly on the back of, of, of Plymouth, but also on, on, on their own efforts. Uh, so, so the opportunities that, that Plymouth provide uh, as a university, I think, are, are, are pretty fabulous. Uh, the other thing is the kind of compactness of the campus. Everything is pretty much in one place. Everything that you need as a, as a student from accommodation, if, you, if you're living kind of on campus, if you're living near to campus, it's still not that far away. Uh, if you want to get on the train to go somewhere, it's the other side of the road. The shops are on the other side, so you've never got to go too far, which is which is dangerous. I know because I spend far too much money in there when I, when I shouldn't. Uh, but everything is in the one place. You don't need a car. You don't need public transport. It's there, uh, and I think that is a, a, a real real benefit to to everybody, quite quite honestly. Fantastic. Great. You, you mentioned before, David, you weren't a big fan of school, but you didn't enjoy it very much. But what, what would you tell your younger self now, with the benefit of hindsight, about how to be a successful undergraduate student? I think it's about taking the opportunities that, that are presented to you. One of the things about university, I think one of the things that I found, it was a bit of a double-edged sword. I found it hard in one way. Uh, but really good in the other, was the level of independence that was provided. Whereas at school, and, and even to some extent at A-level, it, there, was, there was sort of something hanging over you, uh, sort of down at least, I guess, but, but almost this kind of, so always on your shoulder, pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. Here, it was, it, that wasn't there. It was a case of, well, if you don't do it, that's your problem. Uh, we'll support you, we'll provide the opportunity, but you have to do this for yourself. Yeah. And so coming from being at work for a period of about five years, I, I got used to that. Uh, and, and so that sort of fitted into to what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Uh, the opportunities that were presented, I don't think I took as many as I probably should have done, look, looking back. I think being coming in as a mature student, you look at things slightly differently. Uh, but I think looking back, there were a few opportunities, especially about study, studying abroad and, and those kind of opportunities. Uh, I think I would definitely, uh, definitely take if, if I was going to do it again. Yeah. Great. Right, thank great. you. Um, Dave, so um, you mentioned that, you know, it's a welcoming environment uh, as one of the things that you like about the university and the city. Uh, having worked here as a lecturer at UPIC and now being the associate head of the faculty, can you tell us about what the environment is like for international students that have uh, transitioned across to the university uh, and you know how you've seen lives transformed over the years? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things about Plymouth Business School is that we are a, a very real international school. We, we, we have students from all over the, the world uh, coming in at different stages, doing, doing different things. So one of the things that I think there is that we, we've worked with that for so long. We, we kind of know what makes what makes a welcoming environment. Students are all in a sim, generally in a similar position. We, we don't generally have any one that is that is dominant. Uh, so, so we've got that sort of real mixing in the in the classroom. Uh, and one of the thing, one of the real benefits of that, I think, is that, that you sort of take away a, almost a global network of people from your time at university. Mm-hmm. And and by but by having that 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 sort of warm environment in the in the classroom, uh, you're really taking into account people's differences, uh, mm-hmm. differences in opinions, differences in, in outlook, uh, and different kind of almost different experiences uh, to kind of shape current and, and future issues. 
Uh, and because there are so many people from so many different countries, it, it just kind of creates that, that very sort of interactive, very warm, and warm environment. Fantastic. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, ben, just to focus in a bit on your own particular specialist area, um, what do you see as the likely future trends in maritime business and logistics? Do you think things will be different in the sector after COVID, for example? I think things will, ha will have been impacted, certainly. I mean, we only have to look at, at, at sort of seafarers and some of the issues about seafarers being able to leave ships and go home when, when there are so many kind of issues around quarantine and uh, kind of vaccination and, and, and pandemic. Uh, that is really going to, I think that's really made the industry think about kind of the role of seafarers in this one. They, they, they tend, in some ways, tend to be the sort of the forgotten element uh, of, of the maritime industry, that, that we focus on port infrastructure, we focus on ships, the, the processes for trade and so on. But we sort of forget a little bit that there are people involved in, in the process. Uh, will it end, sort of speed up uh, autonomy of, of vessels, so i.e. vessels that don't have crews on? I'm not so sure, uh, <clears throat> but it does sort of raise some issues around the kind of the role of the seafarer. What it has done as well is really raised the profile of the industry in just how reliant uh, the world is, but especially the UK as an island, just how reliant we are on, on our supply chains that, that come by sea. Uh, and so one of the things that it, it does sort of highlight is the need for sort of good people in the industry mm -hmm. managing the, the whole piece around risk, resilience, uh, the bit about making sure the supply chains continue to work. I think we, we look back a few weeks and see the issues around, this isn't really COVID, but we see the issues around the Suez Canal, where the ship ran aground uh, and was aground for, 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 for that short period of time. But just the impact that that had uh, on, on maritime supply chains. So, so I think it is gonna need some good people that do have that sort of risk uh, and a pragmatic uh, problem solving sort of nature. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so yeah, we've kind of got that, that double edged bit really, the reliance of the world on shipping, but also kind of COVID and the way that that's changed the way that, that perhaps we, we work. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, David, for that. Um, how important is it, do you think, to tie closely together your theoretical learning and practical experience? And what kind of placement um, opportunities are there for international students? I think it's absolutely critical, to, to be perfectly honest. Uh, coming out with all the theories is fine, but it's the ability to apply that uh, in, in the kind of real life settings that really is uh, such an important thing. Uh, one of the, the, the things about, uh, certainly about the maritime programs, is that the staff come from a variety of academic and sort of practical, sometimes seagoing experiences. Uh, I've done that, I've got a number of other colleagues who have been to sea in, in, at various points. Uh, and so being able to tie the, 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 the sort of the textbook stuff with, well, this is how, this is how we did it in, in industry. Now, it's difficult because, I mean, say I've been at the university 10 years, so some of my uh, war stories, as it were, are, are getting a little bit old now, uh, but we're still able to share that experience. And by bringing people in from industry who are, are working in industry now, they do share those, those practical experiences. We have a very strong alumni network as well. So we bring people in uh, through that alumni network who were sitting in the position that the current students were sitting in a few years ago, uh, and then can explain and, and really talk through just how uh, their learning in the classroom is sort of fitted with, with their practical experience. Uh, in terms of placement opportunities, we, we do offer uh, placements. Uh, one of the, uh, I've got a student at the moment who, who's done his entire placement at home which is a real testament to the way that we can work uh, in, in these work quite, quite strange times. Uh, but he's worked for uh, a, a fairly large uh, consumer goods organization uh, and has had a, a, a really great time. 
But again, being able to bring some of the supply chain knowledge, probably less of the maritime, more of the, the sort of the broader supply chain issues that we talk about uh, to, to be able to gain that practical experience from that. Uh, certainly I've had other students who've had placements and internships uh, in the city of London and, and uh, in other organizations around the world. In terms of those opportunities for international students, uh, they are there equally uh, for uh, as they are for, for home students. Uh, and in fact, I think nearly half of the students who have taken undertaken a formal placement uh, on through the maritime program have been international students. Uh, so, so yeah, those opportunities are there. Uh, and they're not just in the UK. Quite a few of our students do take those placements and internships elsewhere in the world as well. So it's, it's not just a, a UK thing. Great, thank you. Um, changing direction again slightly. Um, how important do you think are environmental and, and sustainability issues uh, to people who live, work, study in Plymouth? Some of that goes back, I think, to the question that you asked early on about why Plymouth is a, a, a sort of great place to be. Uh, we are so connected to the environment in, in which we live. We see the We've got the sound on one side, which we can see certainly see from some parts of the campus, uh, but you, you can see that, that that stunning natural environment on one side, Dartmoor on the other. You're never very far from uh, some quite key environmental issues. There was something in, I, I was reading this, only this morning about a geothermal project in Cornwall, so, so not too far from here, uh, about generating uh, power and uh, heating from from natural sources mm -hmm. uh, that is very much something that is important uh, to the environment to, to the to, to the city but also to the university and, and it's certainly something that we embed into uh, most of the teaching that we do uh, I, I sort of talk a lot about environmental uh, and social sustainability so, so people issues uh, in the modules that I teach, and I, and I lead a module called Sustainable Supply Chain Management. So, so it's everything that, that is that module. Uh, in terms of, of uh, sort of living in here, I've got to say, I think our recycling service is probably about the, the best that, that I've, of, of anywhere that I've lived uh, in the last 10 years. I think the things that we can do better, uh, but it's pretty comprehensive, it's pretty good. Uh, and I think that does shape the way that, that we as a city, the way that we as a sort of local environment uh, do sort of view those kind of issues. Uh, on the, the, the sustainability side from, from a people thing, uh, we can see the investment that the, the local authority, the local council has put into skills development as the Navy is shrinking. Uh, Plymouth is a, is a very big, or has been a very big naval city, a very big dockyard. As that has shrunk uh, with, with, with the various cuts, so the local authority has really tried to promote keeping those skills moving in a different direction. So from a sustainability perspective, it's not just a case of, well, that business is closing, what are we going to do now? It, it's looking to the future and, and using the kind of the, what Plymouth is, is good at uh, generally for, for other technologies. Uh, and that's a really exciting place, I think, really exciting opportunity and a, actually a pretty exciting place to be. Fantastic. Uh, can you tell us what kind of exciting careers a degree from your faculty can lead to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, looking at the, the maritime uh, programmes in, in particular, uh, many of our students get jobs in, in the City of London. Uh, the City of London is kind of the heart of maritime business, certainly in, in, in the UK, but, but also as a kind of key centre around the world. We have a lot of students in Singapore who, with, with jobs there, both Singaporeans uh, and also uh, other nationalities that, that gain employment there. We've got students in, or graduates, should I say, in, in Norway, Germany, uh, pretty much everywhere you can name there's a, there's a, a sort of maritime centre or port or something like that. We've got, we've got graduates there. Fantastic. Uh, if I think back to uh, when I graduated, uh, I was probably pretty boring because I got a job in Plymouth straight after I graduated. Uh, but certainly somebody that, uh, who was on my course, uh, their first job was in Dubai. 
uh, I had another another friend who her first job, judging by Facebook, she was in a different country every weekend, uh, uh, arranging delivery of ships and, and crewing issues and, and that kind of stuff. The, the great thing I think about the maritime industry is that it is global. It is probably one of the, the uh, sort of largest global industries. And so the opportunities are, are, are there to go and do pretty much whatever ever, ever you want to do. Uh, when we look at uh, students from the, the wider sort of faculty and the, uh, the wider programs, so we see students pretty much, there's a slide I use uh, when, when I'm talking to people. Uh, that just shows the names of companies that, that students have gone on to. Uh, and they're pretty much every household name you can think of, plus a load, uh, that, that, that students have got some great opportunities in. Uh, and you sort of look at them on LinkedIn uh, and what they're doing. It's like, why didn't I think of doing that? That looks really exciting. Uh, so, yeah, the, it's, it opens doors. Uh, and we do have that, that pretty strong reputation for that. Fantastic, thank you. Great, David, thank you. Uh, we're now at our 10th and, and final question. So, so the last one is, uh, what's your greatest achievement? I think that's a really interesting question. Uh, and, and I think it depends which angle that I want to, I want to come at. I, I think to, one of them has to be to go from uh, the kind of kid that I was at, at school back in the, the kind of the late 90s uh, and I've got the letters from school to prove it so if anybody wants to have a look at them just just let me know uh, the, the letters sort of uh, telling my parents that I still haven't finished the coursework and I still have more to do and his exam results are getting worse what are you going to do about it uh, to getting a first at university to mm. getting a PhD uh, I, I can sort of almost hear my teachers going, why didn't he just work harder at school? Uh, that, as a very personal achievement, I think is, is mm. pretty pretty amazing and, and it's something I'm incredibly proud of. Uh, more, more <sighs> the another one is probably the fact that I've got a job that I love. And and I've I mean my 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 CV is a little bit checkered if we if we go back a few years, uh, jumping between different things trying to find something that I want to do, and I feel so lucky that I've got a job that is rewarding. Yes, it it's a bit tough sometimes and it's a bit frustrating sometimes, uh, but I love what I do and, and actually going to work is a is a good thing. Uh, and then I've got an amazing family. As I said, I've got small children, uh, and that, that's a pretty wonderful thing as well. So if I had to pick any one of those three, uh, I think it would be very difficult, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but what I do sort of know, and I'm not saying this uh, sort of glibly, or, and I'm not saying this because you sort of think I have to say this, but I think I owe a lot of what I've got now to those three years as an undergraduate in, in Plymouth. I, I genuinely believe that. Uh, that really changed the course of my life and, and and I think that's pretty amazing so if I had to pick one of those three I'd say it's probably being happy to be honest great stuff inspirational stuff thanks very much David so that's David Adkins associate head of Plymouth Business School and lecturer in procurement and supply chain management um, for those of you watching on YouTube, this is one of a, a series of kind of 10 question videos that we have on the channel. So please feel free to go and check out the others. Thanks, Toby, for joining me and asking the questions. And David, thank you very much for your time and your, your interesting views and stories and, and inspirational to hear about your achievements. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.